stands. All right. So, so we had previously met Mistress. Uh, was that what she was called, Mistress Thundrazi? Oh mm-hmm. uh, yes, Miss, Mr. Thundrazi. You did very good. I will say this: those three uh, establishments are on the way to the Thane Embassy. If you'd like to kind of like stop on the way and check out those those three really quick, if you, if you'd want to. Oh, the purchasers. Yeah, the purchasers. Yeah, they're right on the way. Uh, let's do it. Sure. Okay. So you know the first one was an inn. All right, and it's just any any you know patron that that body you can just name it, anything you want. Well, when you get to the inn and you have the address, there's this blank lot, and as you're as you're sitting there, you 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 can smell this burning. You know, it's like it's like something has burnt down here, and there's a couple of signs. You know, private property stand. You know. Don't you know? Don't trespass and stuff. And and there's a couple other, couple other people you know, walking, walking down the road and whatnot. And it's you know middle of the day now. And uh, looks like this inn is no more. It looks like it, it burnt down. And uh, yeah. And as one one old lady, she's walking by you. She says, "Hi, <laughs> such a shame. This this beautiful inn was here for a hundred years and." Eh, a couple of nights ago, some unexplained fire just burnt it down to the ground and everyone died inside. Oh, it was horrible. <laughs> you could hear the screams as they were trapped inside. Hmm. Well, that sounds horrible, but not all that together unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put 50 uh, of Andrew's paintings in your, in your tavern, <laughs> and that won't happen. Of fire. Of fire. That's all he paints, though. It's fire. Same thing. Couple, couple blocks down the road, the woman that had bought the multiple pictures. Uh, you get there, and <laughs> same thing. You find out, you know, a couple, you know, a couple people, a couple chirping birds that are, you know, walking around. Basically, the, the cottage caught on fire, and it burnt down. Somehow, it just burnt down. Let me guess. <laughs> The third one is burnt down. No, <laughs> no, actually, no. <laughs> the one with just the torch. The house <laughs> was on fire, so a portion of it, but it wasn't totally burnt down. But you can see where the flames kind of came out of a couple of windows and scorched like the the roof. But no, there, there's a there's actually a couple of the mole master militia there, and they have their you know they have their uh, registry boards and they're taking notes and. They have their measuring tape and their measuring string and stuff in there, and he goes, "Ah, oh, that was a, it was a real shame." He goes, "Wow," he says, "Yeah, it was a real shame. They had to kill him." And then he's measuring off. He goes, "Ah, uh, 148 feet." He goes, "But it was a hell of a shot with the crossbow." <laughs> nice. Uh, <clears throat> but you, I mean, you have no clue what they're talking about. But you could, you know, you do hear him say it was a hell of a, hell of a fine shot with the crossbow. So, but you see a couple of guards out there, and the home. You know, you can tell it was definitely damaged. Or it, it, does it, do any of us have a relationship with the guard? I do. A bad one. <laughs> I was going to say a bad one. <laughs> well, remember, okay, so, I have a good one. <laughs> uh, we'll say a couple of uh, a couple of ten days back. Remember the guards that you guys had actually saved? That they were tied up and bound under the table. Mm, and they're probably yeah. going to be sacrificed by the uh, the cult of howling hatred. Well, a couple of those that's a couple of those guys because there were three. I think there were three or four guards tied up under the tables, and you you remember a couple of these guys as those those militia guys that were you know at the tower that that first. I think it was one of the first adventures we had actually done. So it was definitely a couple ten days ago. That's for sure. But you do recognize them. So we've Alleged. we've we've dealt with these <laughs> like guards before, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll walk up to him and be like, and pat him on the back and be like, "Hey, good to see you guys uh, still kicking." Oh, hey, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, man. This uh, I'm really probably not supposed to say anything, but what the hell, the boss is not around. But yeah, this crazy guy. He he was setting his place on fire. Had 
had one of his kids dangle him out the window saying he was going to light him on fire and sacrifice him to some, I don't know, something. So he, you know, he starts coming outside and starts getting a little, little frisky with a couple of the militia boys here. And, uh, one of, one of my buddies were taping it off. It was a hell of a shot, man. Look at this. I mean, and he holds up the tape man, all the way to the door. It's a hundred. He came out and he just plashed him with a crossbow bolt right between the eyes. It was a great shot, but the guy was clearly mad. I mean, he was clearly mad. He, he was going to kill that kid. So we had, we just had to take him out. So we, we, we called in our guy, and he just sniped him out with, with the crossbow and, and put one right between his eyes. Beautiful shot. I don't think I could do I probably would hit the kid or something, but, yeah, that, that would have been me. So what what was he doing? He was trying to catch the house on fire, too? Hey, he, he was lighting his house on fire and saying that he was going to sacrifice the, the kid to something. I don't know. And then it just escalated a couple of the uh, – you know, a couple of the the old Yentas that that live across the street, they came and got us, and we came right over, and uh, yeah, we just had to, we had to put them down. So we really couldn't even question them a whole lot. It, it was either, you know, let him kill the kid, and then we take him under, you know, take take him out, and but no, we we just went ahead and took him out. You know, when you when you got a little little infant dangling them upside down, you know, saying, oh, we're gonna sacrifice them." <laughs> And, you know, we're just we're, we ain't gonna ask any questions. We're just gonna take him out. This is. This have is have you spoke with the uh, with the mother yet? No, she's been dead for years. She oh. died when the kid was born, like about a year ago or so. Whatever. Yeah, I think it was about a year mm. ago. Yeah. No other adults at that at the residence. No, just him, just him and his little boy. How's his little boy? Okay, though the boy's okay. It's 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 in a foster home now. One of mm. the master's best. He'll turn out to be a, a great citizen of the of the city of Old Master in the future, that's for sure. <laughs> how, Maybe the how ghetto. The I'm sure you can probably adopt him, man. I mean, if you're interested. <laughs> yeah, I think our hey, party needs a the, child. <laughs> what happened to the dwarf, the female dwarf you guys had with you? She, uh... She seemed like the nurturing type. <laughs> he kind of chuckles and he goes, oh, "I take that back." <laughs> <laughs> Tough crowd tonight. Wow. Who's going to But he says, "Yeah, kid's okay. It's just some fosterage, basically." He was just trying to. So, so the guy the lighting the building on fire was the owner of the building. The owner of the house, yeah, owner, yeah, mm -hmm. and father of the of the child. They say He's the one that bought all the paintings, right? Uh, he bought, Just a bought painting, one. Yeah, he he bought the painting wow. of a torch. That's the one where the painting was <laughs> wow. of a torch. Yeah, and he said that he had a torch in one hand and he had the, the kid in the other hand. So and he said he like covered the kid in, in in like lantern oil and he said it was it was he was gonna he was gonna light the kid on fire. <laughs> But they they brought an old old Sergeant Bob, Sergeant Bomb, one eye and all, took him down. <laughs> Sergeant <laughs> Bob, a lot of one eyed people in Mobile. It's Bob, but it's yeah, but his his name is. <laughs> it's the secret <laughs> cult of Grouch. Yeah, <laughs> is the is the is the painting gone, or has it been burnt up? Uh, painting. What what are you talking about? What painting? Why well, I, I meant asking in general, like if if they if they let us peek inside and if we can see. Well, I'm, I'm sure I could. <laughs> I'm sure I could probably uh, look the other way for a couple of uh, gents that uh, saved my hide. Sure, I'll. You got. Uh, you got two minutes to get in there and out. Okay, okay I'll uh, hand them. I'll hand them five gold and say thank oh, you very much. Oh, well, th well th thank yeah. you. You already saved my life once. You didn't have to do that, but hey, I'll, uh, I appreciate it. I get get the baby some new shoes or something. <laughs> <laughs> Head on in Daddy there. Needs anything else of yeah. yeah. Wife baby needs, needs clothes. Wife needs clothes. <laughs> baby needs shoes. You need some teeth, MF. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> All, right, baby. All right, so you guys go into the house. <clears throat> some damage, some fire damage. But on the wall, there's a painting of a, of a torch. Fits the description mm. of what came from the Ironheart uh, Gallery. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, take um, some of my spare clothes out of my uh, bag and uh, wrap the painting up in it and just sure. carry it with me. 
Okay. Stick it in your pack. Yep. Yeah, I can we fit it in there. I'll do it. Sure, it fits. Yeah, we call it. Well, actually, his name is Sergeant Bartholomew, but we call him Sergeant Bob for short. But that's that's how we got his name. Sorry about that. This old one eye Bob. <laughs> Uh, is there anything else of uh, of interest uh, in here? I mean, look for notes like we found before. Or just anything uh, out of the ordinary? Uh, nothing out of the ordinary now. Mm -mm. Nope. Well, I don't. Uh, I don't know what else we can do here. Any anybody got any ideas? Otherwise, let's uh, head on to the embassy. All right. Yeah, it's on the way to the you know around the Thane embassy. I mean, you know, like I said, you don't. You don't actually know where this guy lives, this Thayan, mm -hmm. but there are only a couple Thayans in Mallmaster. Right. And uh, you, know, you could probably ask around. I'm we sure. kind of hang out at that embassy, right? Yeah, you can yeah, I would yeah, think so. <laughs> yeah, you can hang around the embassy, yeah. You know, really nothing going on at the embassy. A couple, a couple of folks, you know, come and go, mostly a couple of humans and a couple of the uh, Mallmaster militia and stuff. But no Thayan. You don't see a Thayan. Doesn't come or go or anything like that. At the embassy? At the embassy, yeah. You guys are at the embassy now. Uh, can we, uh, I don't know, knock on the on the gate or whatnot? Or whatnot? <clears throat> sure. There's a, there's a couple of a uh, couple of guards at the gate. Basically ask, who are you? What's your business? What are you doing here? Uh, I say I'm Trevok Lonehammer. I'm here to see uh, Mistress Thundrazi. Mistress Thundrazi. He goes, okay, let me check. Uh, he gets his, he licks his finger, licks his thumb, and starts thumbing through the the registry. And you are who? Trevok Lonehammer. Mm. We escorted her home from the Saj estate uh, some ten days ago. Oh, oh, you're you're part of that, uh, part of that big cahoot huh, that was going on. I'll, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and go and see her. There's, there's nothing really going on, uh. Only, only two of you can go in. The rest of you have to stay out. Sort of like the kids going into the convenience store. Only two kids in at a time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay out and chat with the guards. All right. Now he says, "I, you guys can all go in. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you help her." So you know, he opens up the gate, and you guys go into uh, to the embassy. All right. All right. Not a lot. Not a lot going on in here. Has a. Uh, has a very, has a very gloomy type of decor. You know, lots of, lots of blacks and lots of uh, dark reds and scarlet reds and whatnot. Hmm. So you look on the, you know, there's like a, uh, sort of like a, a plaque on the wall that tells you where everybody's offices are, and uh, and you find the mistress's uh, office. You knock on the door. She tells you, ah, yes, come in. She's actually kind of. Surprised to to see all of you, and she says, "Ah, what what brings you to the embassy? How uh, how did you get in?" So we uh, <laughs> ask nicely. Security. Oh, you yeah, ask nicely. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, security's doing their job. But I know apparently, you're no threat anyway. But uh, apparently, you said nice things about us, and they remembered us. Oh, oh. So what can uh, I do we for are actually, you? Uh, sorry to bother you, but we're we're actually I'm here so looking. Uh, she was the one that was. Uh, she was actually the Harper agent, right? She kind of during that she adventure, she came agent. out. Yeah. So I, uh, I'll just say uh, one of your uh, compatriots um, seems to be not necessarily involved, but uh, near a bunch of strange happenings. And um, before we you just get going, to... she goes, "Please shut the door behind you." Remember, oh, of course. Remember, she tells you that. Do you remember one other big thing about her? She yeah. wasn't an actual fan. She's disguised right. as a fan. Right. But yeah, she she's definitely part of the Emerald Enclave. She's basically infiltrated the embassy to try to see if they can catch, you know, any wrongdoings going on in here. So Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, but she shuts the door and you know, she says, "Please, uh, she goes, "What can I do for you today?" Glad to see uh, security is working good. <laughs> we're we're looking for more information about uh what was his name a Azak? Yeah, Azak. Azak Azak Throm, yeah. Azak Throm, Azak Throm, Throm however you want to say. Mm -hmm. She goes, "Ah, oh, Mr. Throm." She goes, "Yeah, I, I kind of 
between you, me, and the wall here, <clears throat> I don't, I don't really, uh, I don't really trust Mr. Throm. Uh, he, he, he seems to be doing a lot of late night work, if you know what I mean. Not regular, not work during the hours. But as of that, I haven't been able to pin anything on him as of yet because I've got other things going on. But uh, Azik's time will come when I start to investigate him. Why? 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 What is a? Uh, what do you think he's up to? He seems just to be, uh, like I said, just to be sort of around these strange happenings. Uh, he's kind of looking, looking for someone we're looking for as well, apparently. Strange, strange happenings. Uh, I mean, is there anything you can discuss or? Oh yeah, we I'll, we'll lay out the whole or? the whole uh, <clears throat> strange fire cult something. Oh, she said yeah. She said oh, I heard about that last night. One of the house's wives uh, lost her face basically in a fire. She goes oh, how unfortunate. That money, maybe money can buy her a new face. Maybe she kind of <laughs> she kind of laughs a little bit, but she says uh, yeah, unfortunate. But hey, uh, I I can tell you this. I know that Azik isn't here today, uh, but I can, I'll tell you what, I can tell you where he lives. I know, I know exactly where he lives. Um, that would be very useful. Yeah. Okay. She uh, writes down the address for you on a piece of, uh, on a piece of paper. And what kind of fellow is he? Uh, he's, he's very quiet. He is a very, he's a very, he's a very intelligent man. As uh, as all, as all fans are, anyways, uh, but he's he's very methodical. He always he is a very careful planner. So I I would if I were you if I was going to visit him at his home I'd I'd probably be a little bit careful. And also, uh, I can tell you this as well. There are also a couple of our agents that are following him around at all times as well. So be careful because they may think that uh, you could be c conspiring with him and then you will be added onto the list and then you would start to be followed by, you know, the Emerald Enclave organization. But I'll tell you what. He, you know, she, she writes down something on, on the piece of paper and, and she says, just if anything happens, just show them this. And she folds up another small piece of paper and, and, and hands it to you. Meaning if, you know, meaning if, uh, if anyone introduces themselves and presents themselves to you as part of the Emerald Enclave. Sure. Uh, do you happen to know anyone by the name of, uh, uh, Doral S Sire? Doral Sire. No, the name is not familiar to me. Hmm. Is he, is he also a, uh, a witness or something, or, or is he in, is somehow involved in this? I would imagine he probably would be if you're bringing his name up. Yeah, he's uh, well. We don't we don't really know much about him. He's a patron of the arts, but uh, that's about all we know about him. Okay. So uh, well, he is, I, with I can't that, unless uh, unless you guys have any other questions, I think uh, I think we'll say thank you. Would it be funny. possible for us to? Uh, to get access to his office while we're here, or is or is that going to be difficult to to get us in there? I would say no, because he does a lot of work from home, so there may not be anything in his office in the first place. But if you if you do, you know there are quite a few pure guards and stuff, yeah. and you know not Got not it. only guards but Thans and. They know that he's not here, and if they see any any kind of movement, I, I would say probably not during the day. If you want to be sneaky, probably at night. I would say, sure, go for it. You know how the you know how the you know they the guards let you walk right in. I'm sure they'll let you walk right in at night too if you <laughs> if you pay them off. You know, like the typical uh, mole master militia that they give to us. So. <laughs> but I'm I'm sure that uh, you could probably get in here. Okay. Well, if that is it, then uh, thank you for your time and your information. Ah, I told you. I told you several months back that uh, you could always uh, call on any kind of help. You bailed me out. 
I'll bail you out. So you know, you scratch my back, and I will gladly scla- I will gladly scratch yours. Thanks. No problem. All right. So, so how how bad is the reputation of the fans in this area? I mean, are they um, they're not trusted. disliked? They don't actually. The mall master doesn't really even like a fan embassy in here. I mean, that's mm. that's just the way it is. They they just don't want a fan embassy in here. Fans don't have a they don't have a good reputation. You know, they're they're outcasts number one, and they're they're all necromancers. So everyone stereotypically thinks that you know they're all evil and they're all necromancers, and that's. And that's not the case in all, in all things, but for the ones here in, you know, Mole Master, they, they think they are, you know, but that's just the way the Mole Masterites think, so. Is Mole there a, is there a powder room are. here in the embassy? Or, you know, bathroom or a... There, there is a, uh, sure, there's a powder room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I, I want to head over that way and be like, uh, Atticus, can I, can I borrow that? Painting you ever wrapped up? <laughs> Can I borrow your powder kit, Atticus? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want the cucumbers and mask too? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know the, the thing from the the guy's house that you that you just grabbed. Can I borrow that? Sure, I'll give it to you. All right. Painting? So I'll, I'll take it in. I'll take it into the bathroom with me, and I'll just I'll uh, I'll hang it up above the the restroom there, and just leave it. <laughs> 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 okay, I like that. A torch. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I like that. You hang it up. If the embassy should find a way to burn itself down, <laughs> eh, whatever. Hey, hey, it's possible. I, I like that. That's a good thing. You try to get some really trouble good. for it, Gillen. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you know what I'm gonna give you guys all inspiration again because you guys are doing such a great job on the role playing tonight. So everybody add a, a second inspiration. And I know that's not official 5e canon, but uh, I'm going to allow you guys to have multiple inspirations so you guys can have two. Because you never know when you're going to need uh, extra inspiration. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> great, great job, Gillen. I like that. you put the... So he comes back with no painting, Atticus. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Oh, too good. Interesting choice. I take it uh, you're not a fan. Oh, you know, I, I just think, you know, they're obviously interested in art and, you know, all the high-class things that the fans are known for. They'll probably appreciate it. You start to smell some burning as you leave the building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But you don't. Okay, well, let's go check out uh, Azik's place. Sounds like a winner. You have as a, you know that he's in a, a nice, quiet little neighborhood. That's actually quite close to the to the Thane Embassy, and he has a rather small house that's standing in like a sort of like a vineyard, and he has a you know a, a very nice, very very expensive looking low iron fence, and you can see that he has, his house is surrounded by uh, like vineyard vines and you know all these. Uh, poles that have these vines just strewn up with grapes all all down them. It basically surrounds his beautiful little home. And that's what his house looks like. Uh, do we see so, anybody kind of watching the house? Uh, give me a perception check. What's the drink for tonight, Gildan? Oh, nice. Little Woodford and Coke. Nice. So great, great role there, Atticus. You, you, you are the the eagle eye. You, you see that a couple of his neighbors are kind of looking out <laughs> the window. They're kind of, wow. kind of like gawking at you guys. Nice, nice. Hmm. You, you can actually kind of see them, and they're just kind of looking at you, staring, giving you the, the evil eye. <laughs> I think we should come by <laughs> at night. Uh, maybe those are the agents watching his house. Yeah. Right. Could be. They, they don't look like agents. They're they're definitely elder. They're elderly. <laughs> uh, just <laughs> annoying neighbors then. And one of them one of them actually comes out uh, to the to the edge of the fence and he goes, 
What are you doing here? What are you What are you looking for him? Are you looking for the filthy necromancer? And he, and he yells. <laughs> <laughs> this old guy. <laughs> are you looking for the filthy necromancer? So obviously it doesn't look like his neighbors like him too much. That's <laughs> yeah. for sure. Say, uh, yeah. Do you know? Uh, what do you know about him? Uh, he's in there. What do I know about uh, the, the, the Throm? Well, I know he he's one of those uh, ambassadors that we really don't need here in Mallmaster, but he's always in and out. He comes and goes at all hours of the night. Always got these bright, these damn bright lights on, picking his <laughs> grapes in the middle of the night, waking me and my wife up all the time, and it's getting on my last nerve. Hmm. Well, be sure to tell him if you talk to him. <laughs> and he starts to <laughs> cough a bunch. What, what, what was that? I was coughing up a lung, you know. I said, I said well, be sure to tell him chicken. if you talk to him. Uh, to keep his, uh, his lights down. Uh, he's, right. he's probably home if you're looking. What, are you going to try to sell him something? What are you, what are you, try, what are you, what are you trying to sell, kid? What, <laughs> We're you, not what, selling anything, sir. Are you selling soap <laughs> on a rope <laughs> or something? What are you doing? <laughs> yes, that's it right now. That's it. Exactly. Caught I'll me. buy a rope. How much on it? It's over. The last little boy that came through was selling for a silver. I'll take one. I'll take two of them. One for my wife, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just kind of turn around and walk away from him. <laughs> okay, I think we should head in. <laughs> I'm just going to open the gate and uh, walk up, I guess. Sure. Uh, you you open up the gate and a bell rings. As soon as you open up the gate, you hear a thing, uh, sort of like a you, you hear a little squeak, and then you see like a a rod trip a string, and then the string kind of goes between the cracks of the of the you know the cobblestones that go up to his house, and then it rings a little door, uh, rings a little bell by the the top of the door, and you know. After about five seconds or so, the door opens up, and, and there's a, a bald fan man. And he's standing at the door, and he goes, Yes, can I help you? I'll leave it to uh, one of the other characters. To... <laughs> <laughs> are you those kids that are selling the goddamn bars of soap? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have this... need any more soap. What do you, what do you think, Gil? We have this painting of a torch, and you go back and get it. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, can, 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 can I help you? Cat cut your tongue? What 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 can I do for you? If you're if if you're selling something, I'm I'm honestly really not interested. You know, actually we were uh we heard that you might know where we could find Andrick, because we were really inspired by his mural over in the Zent ghetto area of town, and when we asked about it, we heard that uh, you were there with with him, and so uh, we couldn't find Andrick, so we thought maybe, you know, you might be able to help us. He starts to, like, kind of peer around the, the door and stuff, look to the side, he goes, uh, I, I come inside, if, uh, if you'd like. Please, Come into my home. Of course. But, uh, yes, please, quickly come inside. <laughs> so he, you know, he away of, inside. And, and he's kind of, kind of looking back and forth. And, and as you brought up, uh, you know, as you brought up uh, Andrick's name, he just kind of looks back and forth, and he's like, "What in the hell?" So he welcomes you. I mean, welcomes you right in. So hmm. he's got a, a nice. Nice home. Everything's nice and organized, you know. Uh, pictures of of all kinds of fays throughout the years. Probably his his ancestors, you know. A, uh, even a picture of his pet mummy that he has, because he is an necromancer. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't all the pictures look basically the same? Uh, his pet, yeah, his pet mummy is uh, called Stinky or something like that, and he's <laughs> missing like an arm and stuff. But they're like, he's kind of got his hand. His arm over, stinky, and kind of smile. Uh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he invites everyone, and he says, "Please, uh, please have a seat." He goes, uh, "You mentioned Andrick." He says, 
tell me what you know of Andrew. Uh, well, he's an excellent painter, and you know, like I said, we saw his artwork, and everyone was so entranced by it. It was truly um, transformational.